RAW or JPEG? It's an often discussed question and not an easy one to answer, especially if you're just starting out. So let's look at the pros and cons of each today and find out what the right file format is for you. Since I've yet to find a bird that's gonna sit still for test shots for like 10 minutes, I asked my old mate Charlie to help me out and he agreed. So I set him up on a perch and I'm gonna take a whole roll of JPEGs with the equivalent RAW files and then we go to my studio and look at the differences. My camera's ready to go, Charlie's ready to go sitting on his perch waiting to have some photos taken of him. Set my camera to RAW and JPEG, I'm gonna take a bunch of exposures some too bright, some too dark, some perfect with my flash. And I'm also going to take a lot of shots with the different picture styles to show you how they affect the look of your images. So let's take some shots and then I'll see you in the studio. Made it back to the studio, downloaded the files on my computer that I've just taken off Charlie and I think we should have a look at them and see if we can spot some differences right away. So we're now here in the folder and the first thing we can notice is that you can see a preview of the JPEG file. So they are readily available and you can do whatever you want with them. You can email them to friends or yourself. You can upload them to social media. JPEG is basically a plug and play format that is ready to go the moment you download it onto the computer. A raw file just as the name suggests, gives us the raw camera data. Whereas the JPEG gives us highly edited and compressed files straight out of camera. If we were comparing the two to food, a JPEG would be a generic pre-made drive through a takeaway meal, whereas the raw file would be a meal where we buy great ingredients at the market and then create a beautiful dinner out of them right up to our taste. And just like those ingredients from the market that have to be cooked, a raw file also has to be cooked to get the great result that we want out of the files. When they come out of camera, they can often look quite neutral and flat, but that's exactly what we want, because then it allows us to recover all the details and transform the file into the final image that we envisioned when we took it in the field. While the JPEG works right out of camera and we can use it on a multitude of devices, a RAW file usually needs two other pieces of software for us to be able to work with it. First of all, you need a program like Fast on Image Viewer to view the RAW files and to click through them. And then you need a second piece of program like Photoshop, Lightroom or other RAW converters that allow you to actually convert your RAW file into a usable file format. So this is where JPEG really wins out in the ease of use compartment and speed. You plug your card in, download the files, they're ready to be used. That's not the case with the RAWs. It takes some time and a little bit of learning to be able to deal with RAW files and to transform them into a nice looking image. Secondly, let's look at the file size. My average RAW file is about 35, 36 megabytes, can be as low as 28 or as high as 45 megabytes depending on the ISO that I use and how much detail is in my files. Let's click on an average JPEG that's just nine megabytes. So it's only about a quarter of the file size of a RAW file. So this is another reason why JPEG can be good for you because you can store a lot more JPEGs on a smaller hard drive, for instance, than you can RAW files. So does that make JPEG the perfect file format? Well, when it comes to speed and ease of use, I'd say yes, but JPEG comes with severe limitations as well. What are they? Let's look at them. First of all, with JPEG, your camera does all the editing for you. You can select certain picture styles on the back of your camera and these will severely impact the look of the images that your camera, or the look of the JPEGs that your camera spits out. So I've created this row of sample images where I use the seven different picture styles available. And we can see that the look of the images is actually quite different when we flick through the different picture styles. In one image, the cockatoo has a yellow crest, in the other one, it has an orange crest. In one image, the background is a bit brown, in the other one, it's bright green. So this is something to be aware of when you're shooting JPEG. Whatever you dial into your camera, whatever setting you're using, whatever white balance you're using, severely impacts the look of your images 
and also it is hard for you to make any changes to these settings after the fact. And this is where the raw format comes in for me. Because I'm given a large file of raw data, it contains a lot more information for me to work with during the raw conversion process and to get exactly the final images out of my raw file that I envision in the field. So most of the things I select in the field are actually not permanent and I can change them after the fact on the computer. So if I choose the wrong white balance, it's just a few clicks to fix it up. And things like the picture styles don't even apply. And if we make a little mistake like we sometimes do by overexposing or underexposing, it's not a problem either because we can easily fix that up during the raw conversion process as well. If we're shooting JPEG, the scope of editing is very narrow and it's a lot harder for us to make these changes. Whereas with the raw file, we have all the flexibility in the world to get the absolute most out of our images and to create stunning final files. Shooting in RAW also future-proofs your files. A JPEG is not a lossless file format. Every time you save a JPEG file, it slightly uses some quality because it's a compressed file format. Whereas with a RAW format, that doesn't happen and you're actually able to take advantage of software advancements in the future. Because you have a RAW file that has a lot of RAW data and once a better RAW converter comes out, you can open your old RAW file and a new RAW conversion software that will be able to read more data out of the old file and give you more detail and nicer colors. So with the RAW file, you will be able to get nicer images in the future, whereas with the JPEG, you're stuck with your old file that's actually degrading in quality. So I think that's a very big and important point in the favor of the RAW format. Let's look at a few examples. I already said that with a RAW file, I can recover, for instance, a too bright image, whereas with a JPEG, that's very hard. So let's open up one RAW and one JPEG, the identical file in Photoshop, and see what we can do. So here's my overexposed JPEG in Photoshop. As you can see, there's no detail in Charlie. And when I try to recover the detail, let's say with shadows highlights adjustment, even with an aggressive setting, there's no way I can recover any of that detail that I have lost in the bird. Or I could go back, I could try and darken it down with a curve, but you can see there's just a lot of areas that are simply lost because the JPEG file format doesn't give us the ability to recover such areas. Let's open the identical RAW file and see what we can do. So this is the same RAW file now, open in Adobe Camera RAW, and let me show you that with just a few slides on the sliders, I can fully recover all the detail that looked lost in the other file. We pretty much recovered 100% of the detail that was completely lost in the JPEG file. So here's a series of JPEGs that are unexposed a fair bit and then just changed my white balance between shots. And you can see how the different white balance really impacts the look of your images. So what happens if we like the white balance of this shot but want to edit that file where the white balance is completely wrong? So I've opened these two JPEGs but if I try to match this image with that JPEG, it's actually really hard. I would have to go into the color balance and try to move the colors around and shift some other things around and it would still be very hard to actually make the files look the same. And secondly, if I try to brighten this file because I underexposed it as well, I'm starting to really quickly lose some of the detail on the bird. So let me show you now how this same scenario would play out if you're shooting in RAW. In RAW, what I would do, I would open the first file I'd say, I like the white balance, but it's a little bit too dark. So I go brighter, pull down the highlights and have a really nice looking file. If I wanted to make this blue file look the same, all I have to do is remember the settings of the other file, type them in and I have myself the identical looking image in almost no time. So with the JPEG, this was a real headache. With the RAW, it took about two seconds to fix up the white balance and the brightness of the image. And to me, that is the true power of the RAW format. As I said before, nothing is permanent. With a JPEG, you're at the mercy of your camera and you have to be 100% perfect all the time in the field. If you stuff it up with the JPEG, it's almost no way to recover things properly. 
Whereas with the RAW format, there's a lot more leeway to recover things or to shoot in very difficult lighting conditions. And this is what I did in my last video as well. If you haven't seen it, you should check it out, where I edited Tim's Kingfisher image that was severely overexposed, but because he shot in RAW, I was able to recover all the detail and bring it back to a really nice looking image. So what it comes down to essentially is with JPEG, the camera does all the work for you and the settings you type into the camera are very important and your scope for error is very narrow. Whereas with RAW, we have to do all the work, but we have the added bonus of being able to almost change anything that we do in the field after the fact, ensuring us the best possible results. So what's better, RAW or JPEG? What's your opinion? Let me know in the comments. I hope this video could shine some light onto the RAW versus JPEG discussion for you and help you to decide what the right file format is for you. For me, and for most of you, I would recommend the RAW format because it gives us ultimate future proofing, ultimate flexibility, and the ability to recover some of the mistakes we may have done in the field. The big plus for JPEG is the ease of use. Anyone can use a JPEG. You turn your camera on, you take a photo, you transfer the JPEG onto your computer, you're ready to go. You don't have to learn any software, anything else. So that's the big plus. Speed of use and ease of use is why JPEG is appealing to so many people. And it takes up a lot less space on your hard drives. But that all comes at the big expense of having none or very little flexibility in how you edit your files. With a RAW file, I can recover almost anything that has gone wrong in the field or that I think the camera messed up a little bit. Whereas with the JPEG, what your camera spits out is kind of what you get. So this is why I love the RAW format. If the white balance is slightly off or something is too bright or too dark, I can just move a few sliders and get the best result. And also future-proofing. JPEG is not a lossless format. Every time you save a JPEG, it decreases a little bit in quality. So that's something to be aware of. So this is why I love the RAW format and this is why I recommend it to all of you to use it. Yes, it takes up a little bit more space on your hard drive, but I think it's definitely worth it. So now there's only one thing left to do. Hit that subscribe button and subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.